In this video, we are talking about colligative properties of solutions. So first of all, what is a colligative property? Well, it's a property of a solution that depends upon how many solute particles there are and not on their identity. So it doesn't matter what they are. The only thing that affects these properties is how many particles there are dissolved in that solution. The properties, the colligative properties that we'll talk about are three. Boiling point elevation, freezing or melting point depression, and osmotic pressure. So starting out with boiling point elevation. If you have a solution, if you have pure water, and we're at, you know, one atmosphere of pressure, the, that water will boil at pretty close to 100 degrees Celsius. Now, if we add a solute, it doesn't matter what it is. In this case, I put an ionic compound in here because it has cations and anions, but it could be a molecular compound, sugar, you know, anything, um, ethylene, glycol, different solutes, doesn't matter. All that matters is how many particles there are. And this changes the boiling point. It raises it. It always elevates it or it raises it. So, you know, maybe it goes up to 102 degrees Celsius. It's what it depends, how high it goes, depends upon one thing and one thing only, and that is how many particles there are that are dissolved in that particular solution. The more particles that are dissolved, the higher the boiling point goes. Freezing or melting point depression, same idea, only it goes the other way. So let's say we have pure water. It's going to freeze at pretty close to zero Celsius. It freezes and melts at the same temperature. So freezing point and melting point mean the same thing, pretty much, except they're going in different directions. Same number, though. Now let's say we put another solute in there. Again, it does not matter on the, about the identity of that solute, just how many particles there are. And this will lower, it'll always lower the freezing point or melting point. So it freezes or melts at a lower temperature, let's say minus 1.5 degrees Celsius. Now osmotic pressure takes a, a little bit more to talk about. So for osmotic pressure, you kind of need a special setup. You need something called a semi-permeable membrane separating two solutions. And what a semi-permeable membrane is, it's something that allows some things to pass through it and not others. For this one, we'll say that the semi-permeable membrane will allow water molecules to pass through, but not the solute particles. So if we have two, we have well, this water separated by, you know, Two, two sides separated by a semi-permeable membrane. If there's just water on both sides, they'll be at the same height. The um, atmospheric pressure is pushing down on both sides equally. They're going to be at the same level. Now, if we put a solute on one side, now remember, the solute cannot pass through the semi-permeable membrane, just the water can. So what happens is the water is naturally going to try to get the concentration to be the same on both sides of this barrier. And the only way that it can do that with a semi-permeable membrane there, one that only allows water to pass through and not the solute particles, is for the water molecules to go from the side that does not have any particles to the side that does have particles. And then it's going to go over here. And it's, when, it, when it does, it's trying to dilute this, this side so that its concentration can be the same as over here, which is 0. Of course, it can never get there. But what happens is as water passes here from the left to the right, from the side with fewer solute particles to the side with more solute particles, this level of water rises. Now remember, atmospheric pressure is pushing down on it. Also, as this side, this column of water gets higher and higher, gravity is also pulling it down. And so that increases the pressure at the base down here. The higher this goes, the greater the pressure until it, you reach a point where the pressure downward due to gravity pulling this solution down exactly balances the osmotic pressure, the pressure of the water passing through the semi-permeable membrane trying to make this level rise. At that point, it, it remains where it is. And whatever pressure that, that is at that point, that's the osmotic pressure. We're not going to actually calculate it. Now, osmotic pressure is relative to um, the human body uh, quite a bit. All of these are, really. But in particular with red blood cells. Now, if your, your blood system has a um, s solution, if your blood, s blood is a solution where the concentration of solute particles, the, the ions usually that are dissolved in the inside the cells and outside the cells are the same, we call that an isotonic solution, and that's, that's what you need. 
and then the red blood cells will be normal and they, they look something like this here in the middle. On the other hand, if you have what's called a hypertonic solution, this means that you have more solute particles outside of the blood cells than there are inside. What's going to happen is because the concentration of the solute particles is lower inside than outside, just like that picture I showed you a minute ago, the water is going to flow from inside the cell to the outside. The cell, is cell membrane, is a semi-permeable membrane. It allows water to pass through, but not the solute particles. Sodium, chloride, potassium, what have you, magnesium, calcium, those kinds of things. And so in a hypertonic solution, okay, we get shriveled blood cells. It's called crenation is what it's called. But yeah, the point is that we, we need to have an ice, our blood to be an isotonic solution. Um, if you give a high, if it's a hypotonic solution, let's say, let's say um, you're working in a hospital and you're hanging an IV, giving a patient an IV, intravenous solution, and you make a mistake. Well, not you, let's say the lab made a mistake. And instead of giving uh, you a solution, an IV solution, whose concentration of, of particles is the same as a, a, the blood system, they give you deionized water, no, no particles in it there. In that case, what will happen is the, the concentration of solute particles, at, if you give, some, say, deionized water outside of the red blood cells, will be lower than inside. So water will pass through the cell membrane inside the blood cell. Okay, this is called a hypotonic solution, and if it's bad enough, the cells can, will swell and eventually will burst, and that's, that's definitely not good. So you don't want crenation with a hypertonic. So let's say instead of giving the proper concentration of IV solution, give one that's too concentrated. This would give a hypertonic solution. That's bad. Hypotonic, that's bad. You want isotonic. That's what you want.